Is Shana Lona, she's the communication advisor for the Norwegian Refugee Council, Council and she's in uh, Amman, Jordan. Shana, always good to speak to you. Thank you for your time. Now, it was just today in a press statement released by your organization that Jan Egeland, the Secretary General of the NRC, said, and I'm, I'm quoting here, war has rules and it is clear that the Israeli campaign has been conducted with utter disregard for international humanitarian law. And it does seem that this disregard from Israel is what is perpetuating this worsening humanitarian crisis that your colleagues are seeing and experiencing in Gaza. Absolutely. It's not just international humanitarian law, it's international law in general. We've seen the ICJ issue provisional ruling after provisional ruling calling on Israel to increase aid to provide humanitarian support for the Palestinians, or at the very least, facilitate access to humanitarian assistance. And time and again, we've seen that that Israel just simply ignores these rulings. And, and now we've seen, as this 30-day period that the U.S. government gave to Israel to improve conditions, that the conditions have not only not improved, but they've actually gotten worse, with now 800,000 pa uh, Palestinians in Gaza estimated to be on the brink of famine, and uh, and 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 uh, thousands, hundreds of thousands of people in need of life-saving assistance. Uh, Shana, uh, Israel is saying that since October, uh, through the Erez crossing, 741 aid trucks have entered Gaza. But we know that number, even if it is correct, is simply just not enough. How much aid uh, is actually needed? Because we're also getting reports that so much of that aid is stuck at the Egyptian border and just can't get into Gaza. That's right. So it's unclear how many trucks, but it's estimated at least 500 to 600 trucks per day would be needed to meet the need. So even that the U.S. demand for 350 trucks per day falls short of, of what the needs really uh, are meant to be. But we've spent so much time counting trucks. And what we really need to be looking at is the needs on the ground and whether people's conditions are improving or whether they're continuing to deteriorate. In terms of aid that is that is not making it in, there are around over 900 trucks uh, in El Arish port in Egypt waiting to be brought into Gaza. There's an estimated 700 trucks worth of aid that's been dumped on the Gaza side of the Karim Shalom crossing that's been inaccessible for over a month now to the logistics cluster to be able to go and sort through that aid and, and make sure that it can be distributed. So it's not only a question of being able to get aid inside of Gaza, but it's a question of being able to reach the people who are in need the most. For a month now, over a month, we've seen the towns of Beit Lahia, uh, Beit Hanun, and Jabalia uh, under a tremendous siege. So I'd ask Israel of those uh, alleged 700 trucks that they claim entered, how many of those trucks made it to the people who are most in need in, in the north of Gaza? My guess would be very, very few, if any. Northern Gaza is, of course, in crisis, fears of a looming famine. Uh, what are you hearing from those who are trying to distribute aid, what little they can, what it is actually like in Gaza right now as an aid worker to try and even get anywhere near those northern parts, those areas like Beit Lahir that you speak of, Kamal Adwan Hospital that has been under siege, just getting any supplies, water, um, food, the very basics needed to survive. How difficult is that? It's First of all, there are a limited number of humanitarian agencies that are operational in the north of Gaza to begin with, but very, very few trucks have made it into the far north, which has been under this tremendous siege. We've had staff in Gaza City who've been meeting with people fleeing from those areas, and what they're describing are just scenes of, of uh, chaos scenes of tremendous need, people without any food, any water, afraid to leave because they are afraid they will be shot or detained, and, and knowing that they have nowhere safe to go. Uh, and so the, the needs are continuing to grow. One of the challenges that we're having is that there is very little contact and very little humanitarian activity happening there to be able to report back on what exactly the conditions are. But we knew, do know that the needs in those areas are tremendous and that 
and that the tens of thousands of people who are uh, believed to be trapped in those areas, uh, the UN, UN officials have warned, are at imminent risk of death. Shana, what are the short-term, even long-term effects of all of this? I think, you know, 70% of those who have been killed in Gaza are women and children. Uh, I mean, this is uh, what so many have described as genocidal. South Africa, in its uh, case to uh, the, the International Court of uh, International Criminal Court, has said that Israel is using starvation as a weapon of war. And we think, of course, of the immediate deaths, but the long-term ramifications here for Palestinian people is tremendous. I think you have to look at this, and there's so many ways to think about the long-term ramifications. So first of all, we think about the long-term health implications, just physical health uh, complications as a result of this. People are malnourished, their bodies are weak. What type of toll does this stress and trauma take physically on people? Then you think about the psychological trauma where we have generations of Palestinians experiencing tremendous loss, witnessing uh, in, incredible uh, violence. And what is that going to, and, and then you have hundreds of thousands of children who haven't attended school for over a year. And what, what will that lead to long-term? And then of course we have the just unbelievable, and I can see the footage that you're showing, the B-roll footage on this interview, the incredible destruction and thinking about how that will be, how reconstruction could even happen in Gaza, how long it will take, and, and what the conditions people will be living in once the hostilities end. They won't immediately return to their homes. It will take years, decades, in order for the for physical recovery. And I'm not sure that the Palestinians in and from Gaza will ever be able to recover from the trauma of the last 13 months. Yeah, absolutely. Shana Lowe, good to speak to you live to us there from Jordan's capital, Amman.